85% of properties pledged for Ukrainian refugees have not been activated. So over 8 in 10 properties pledged to local authorities up and down this country not activated. Tom McEnany, media consultant and founder of Effective Aid Ukraine is with me. Tom, I know you were on here talking about how slow this process was previously. You're probably not altogether surprised by these figures. Yeah, I think I, I may be one of the first people to call this out uh, on this programme um, um, only uh, a few months ago and um, saying that what we have from a refugee point of view, from a Ukrainian refugee point of view, um, is not uh, so much a lack of uh, accommodation, but a lack of competence. We have space available. And instead of taking on the space, which remember, Kieran, is free, you know, and is, is, is much better for the families because they have a support network, you know, families that are trying to help them. Mm. And instead of allocating this accommodation, we're leaving them in very, very, very expensive, uh, mostly private accommodation centres around the country, um, and we're just running out of emergency accommodation. And and might it be the case, though, Tom, that some of the pledged accommodation ends up getting used, you know, through other channels? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. I'd have known people myself There's who are kind of linked up with Facebook or, or the local authorities go out and maybe it's actually not suitable to put people into the pledged accommodation. Okay. There's a couple of things. First of all, for a small number of people and um, uh, that if you wait for months after months after months, uh, for the local authority to make contact with you. And by the way, it is local authorities. It's not the Red Cross. A lot of people think this is the fault of the Red Cross. Since March, the Red Cross has had limited responsibility for allocating accommodation, even though they were the ones who took all the names. But I've had decided it was the local authorities. So it's, it's, it's important to make that distinction. But if you've been waiting for months and months and you're keen to help, and m- many, many Irish people are, well, then you're going to find another route. You've got a friend who knows somebody who knows somebody who, whatever, or you contact an organisation such as ours or, or, or some other, or, or, or somehow you find somebody, you know somebody who's Ukrainian who knows somebody who needs. Of course, some of the accommodation is going, um, um, is going to go elsewhere. But that is because the local authorities have been incapable, incompetent mm. when it comes to allocating and, the accommodation. And occasionally, Kieran, can I say, the, 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 it gets assessed just in, in response to your point and it's decided that it's not suitable which actually I think is a bit ridiculous like I have uh, a Ukrainian lady as a guest in my house in the studio which has its own ensuite uh, uh, toilet mm. um, it doesn't have a shower and therefore would be deemed unsuitable and yet that uh, that lady is is delighted to be there you know she's living in the centre of Dublin and all yeah. the rest of it. she's not having to pay rent so some of the, the, the criteria for deciding su- su- suitability need to be reviewed. But in fairness, if the local authorities and IPAS and the government can't even allocate the, the, the free accommodation across the country yeah. that is suitable, and um, we can hardly ask them to start uh, uh, adding to the list of, accom- and, of accommodation that they're not capable of allocating. And Tom, is it just that, is, is it an incapability or incompetence? Might it be something more sinister? Well, there are only two, logically there are only two uh, possibilities, okay? It's either incompetence or malevolence. The, 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 well, I would like to think that it's only incompetence. I would like to think that the reason Galway County Council, for instance, which has 506 pieces of pledged accommodation available to us, but in six months has only allocated 12. And the reason uh, Cavan County Council, which has 180 pieces of accommodation, but in six months has only allocated four. And Donegal County Council, which has 351 pieces of of accommodation allocated, but so far has allocated zero. I'd like to think it's incompetence. But in fairness... Even my 14-year-old son, if given the list of accommodation and telephone and the list of refugees, would probably do a little bit better than zero if given six months to work with. So we have to think that there's a policy in some um, uh, councils across the country, an unofficial policy, by the way, which goes totally against the government policy, an unofficial policy Mm. by local authorities, because zero out of 351 in six months, that's difficult. That's quite some accomplishment. That's not easy to do. These are the same local authorities run by the same departments that we're hoping will be able to solve the housing crisis. If they can't allocate <laughs> free accommodation, it yeah. doesn't really give you much faith in their ability to sort out the expensive stuff. 